Okay, YouTube, so this is, uh, we're moving into part four of um, uh, Granddaddy's Super C. And um, I just want to make sure the family understands that, you know, I have to, you know, I have a 15 minute limit on YouTube, so I just have to kind of uh, chop everything up to fit within a 15 minute window. And uh, I also would like to get a message out to the family that um, if you're watching these videos, please be on the lookout for any type of manuals for for this tractor. If if you don't want to give them up, hey, that's fine. Just uh, let me let me make a copy of them. So so that would really that would really help me out with this thing because trying to find information about this tractor is. Uh, not impossible, but it just uh, it's, it's time consuming trying to find the right engine. I, I think I, I'm not sure, but I think that these these engines these tractors had an engine swap somewhere, a different type of engine put in. Uh, they manufactured the tractor for four years, and they made some changes uh, about the two year mark. So. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that this tractor's gonna fall right in that window somewhere. But uh, okay, so just just for a rehash, we we've uh, if if you watched the previous videos, you kind of know where we stand with this thing. And um, I've been down here doing some tinkering off camera to try to get the sh the shot set up. And uh, but I just want to let you know that I'm 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 ready to try to start this thing. Um, clean the spark plugs up and, and the carburetors out of the chemical bath and I've got it installed back on the tractor. Um, but I have no idea how this is going to turn out so you know it, it might take me a, a few minutes to get to get this thing figured out and figure out what's what's going on with it. But um, so just kind of be patient with the videos. I'll set the camera up and we'll see kind of Kind of where this where where this old girl takes us. So uh, stand by. I'll get the camera moved and and uh, off we go. All right. So uh, before we uh, attempt to start here, I'm gonna remove the oil pressure gauge um, simply because it it just doesn't <coughs> it doesn't have any numbers on it. And uh, this startup is all about an assessment, so I want to know what the actual oil pressure is instead of just uh, a range. So uh, I'm going to install my own gauge. Okay, so we got uh, we got our manual oil pressure gauge set up here, and that's going to allow me to. Uh, determine the condition of uh, the main bearings and the oil bearings and uh, main bearings and rod bearings in, in the bottom of the tractor here. So uh, the lower the oil pressure, the bigger the taller, the bigger the gap is between the rods and the main bearings and I don't want a big gap. You want a, you want about a two thousandths clearance and this oil pressure is, is going to give me a a rough indication of, of what the bottom end on this thing looks like. So, uh, so we've got an oil pressure gauge set up. And uh, I'm just going to check here with the test light to see kind of do we even have any voltage up here to the coil. And uh, my uncle's got this switch wired up here. I'm not sure what, what, um, what he's got done up here, but uh, let's give it a shot and see. All right, I'm not getting anything on the coil from there, so I just wonder if I just wonder if the original switch works. Hmm. Let's see. Hey, look at there. So, 
we got voltage to the primary side and uh, I shouldn't have any voltage to the secondary side until the tractor turns over. So uh, let me move the camera. I, I think we're about ready here. Let me move the camera and get set up and I'll get my little stethoscope so I can listen to what's going on in the bottom end of the tractor if it decides to run. We may have to put a condenser in it. But uh, I think I've done all I can do at this point, so let me get set up. Okay, so we, we positioned over here on the other side of the tractor, and what I've got here is uh, what I've got here is a pair of mechanics stethoscope, and it's just got a probe on it that I can probe along the side of the engine if this thing runs, and uh, I can kind of listen around, but. I want to see if it runs first before I start probing around. But uh, okay, well let's uh, let's hope for the best and kind of see what happens here. All right, so this this should be ignition. I don't know if you can see that. Um, yeah, that should be ignition. This is the starter. This is the choke. So. Uh, I've checked to see that I've got fuel in the in the carburetor, so I know, I know I've, I physically have got fuel in the carb. So let's uh, let's try to do it without a choke, and just see you know kind of what happens here. So there's ignition. Let's give it just a little bit of throttle, and uh, wish me luck. Okay, so there it is. Um, I don't quite know what to say. I probably need to take a little bit of time and try to try to absorb all of this and figure out how I'm gonna relay, you know, what I saw and what I heard. But uh, I, I guess we can start with oil pressure gauge. So if you go back and look at the footage, you can see that the oil pressure gauge does fluctuate. Uh, there's a fluctuation in the needle at uh, about five pounds. Even though the oil pressure is 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 at 40 pounds, 
the fact that there's a fluctuation tells me that uh, one of the main bearings or rod bearing journals are out around. Now there's no knock or no noise and uh, I'll have to think about whether I want to try to correct that or not. Usually when you have a fluctuation of around 8 to 10 pounds you, you start to hear a knock or a rattle. And I'm not hearing that in this engine. Um, so I, I might just have to think about that for a couple of days and see, you know, see what I want to do about that, if if anything. Um, I, did, I didn't, like I said, I didn't hear a whole lot with the stethoscope. Uh, I wish I could plug the stethoscope up to the camera so so you could hear kind of what what I'm hearing on on the bottom on the bottom end of the tractor, but. Um, the, uh, the distributor is, is extremely noisy with the stethoscope, so I suspect I've got a, a bad bushing or something in the distributor. But uh, I, I think probably a little bit of oil will take care of that. So that's, I guess that's going to wrap it up for now. So uh, I hope that the sound of, of this machine kind of brings back memories for for everybody in the family. I, I know it certainly does for me. And uh, it's it's nice to hear it's nice to hear it run. Now we you know we got a lot more testing that, that I'm gonna do with this thing. Obviously we need to do a road test on it next to see, you know, how the transmission and the clutch and, and all that works. But as it stands right now the engine does run. Um, I was able to disengage the PTO with the clutch, so I'm suspecting that the clutch is probably going to work, but I won't know that till I put it under load. I know the hydraulics work. So uh, I'll conclude uh, this, this video, and I'm not sure what I'm going to call the video. I guess uh, there she blows, I guess. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope, like I said, I hope this brings back a lot of memories for, for the family. Please send me a comment. Give me a thumbs up in the link. Subscribe. Shoot me an email or call me if, uh, if any of you can, would like to add any comments to this. So uh, they would be greatly appreciated. So that's all for now, and y'all keep, keep, po keep, uh, Keep ready for the next videos, and, and I'll keep you up to date. So that's it for now.